Good morning, uh, everyone. Thanks for inviting me to, uh, to this great occasion today to speak. It's, it's a real honor uh, to be here. I want to start off by thanking Sean McGarvey and uh, your entire organization and members for your leadership, for your talent, your expertise, your skill, your dedication, and mostly for your friendship with Disney for so many years. I'd also like to thank and acknowledge Brent Booker for being a, a trusted friend and colleague. Thanks for setting this up today. Very much appreciate that. Now, as many of you know, uh, Disney in North America is building trades union. We, we've got a great history together. Uh, in Central Florida, uh, you've been with us since the very beginning. In fact, the Walt Disney World Resort in Orlando, it's celebrating 50 years this year. And thank you. And you all, you've been there since before we laid that first brick in 1969. In fact, I was uh, talking to a gentleman, uh, Wally. I don't know if Wally, you're out there. Uh, there was a uh, there was a painter aboard the plane with Walt Disney himself when we went and checked out uh, the Orlando site for the first time. And we we sometimes call those the secret days when no one knew exactly what Disney was building. Now, as you probably know, Disney World it opened on October 1st in 1971. And at that time, it had one theme park. It was the Magic Kingdom. It had a couple hotels. Uh, Disney's Polynesian and the Contemporary Hotels, and it, then it had Fort Wilderness, which was a campground. That, as you all know, was just the beginning. Today, Walt Disney World has four theme parks. It has 31 owned and operated resort hotels with nearly 30,000 rooms. It's got a couple of water parks. It's got four professional golf courses. It has ESPN Wide World of Sports Complex, and then it has Disney Springs, which is a 120-acre shopping, dining, and entertainment district and it's got a ton more than that. Our resort is big. It's roughly 40 square miles, nearly the size of San Francisco, or twice the size of Manhattan. In fact, with our 70,000 cast members on site in Orlando, Walt Disney World is the largest single site employer in the nation. That, of course, includes the 5,000 NABTU represented workers, so thank you. Over on the other coast, we have another 1,600 members at the Disneyland Resort. To give you a better sense of the size and scope of what you've all helped us build at Walt Disney World, I figured I'd share some fun facts with you all. If you added up the cast members and the guests on our property each day, Disney World's population is larger than 90% of American cities. Disney World has a bus fleet the size of Atlanta's. If you counted all of our boats at the resort, we'd have the seventh largest naval fleet in the world. <laughs> we run the largest laundry operation in the southeast. Each week we're sorting and washing and drying and ironing and delivering 2.5 million pounds of linens, including almost 200,000 towels every single day at Walt Disney World alone. We serve nearly 12,000 different food items on the property. And each year, you know those big turkey legs? Guess eat two million of those things. <laughs> and those Mickey ice creams, 3.5 million Mickey ice cream bars. Over at the Magic Kingdom, one of our restaurants can serve almost 4,000 guests in a single hour. There are few, if any, quick service restaurants in the world that are faster. And then obviously with such a big footprint, we make sure that we're doing our part in taking care of the world as well. Our team takes care of more than 7,000 animals, and they share their expertise with naturalists and environmental authorities around the world. And then by early 2023, 40% of the energy supply to Walt Disney World will be generated by the sun, thanks to the four solar arrays across the state of Florida. It's gonna be enough energy to power all four of our theme parks. Now these sites, both on the East Coast and the West Coast, you helped us build these places. They are truly, truly amazing places. And when you help us build a project of this size, you're constructing, you're constructing more than just the buildings and the plumbing and the electrical infrastructure and the landscaping. You're actually building a community, an economy. And for our guests and cast members, you're, build, you're building a home away from home that is completely full of magic. Disney World and Disneyland live by the wise words of our founder, Walt Disney, and he said, our properties will never be complete as long as there's imagination left in the world. 
And that's how things felt for decades, until, of course, the pandemic struck. The momentum of the last six decades, it felt like a train barreling down the tracks. And when COVID hit, our train came to a grinding halt, and we had to pull that train into the station. We closed our parks, we closed our resorts, we docked our ships around the world, we canceled our adventures and our expeditions, and we sent our people home. This was incredibly painful for all of us. But as that world shut down and guests and many of our cast members had to stay at home, we knew that there was still work to be done. We couldn't just abandon the resort and all the work that took us, all of us, decades to build. We had to keep things going. And that's when our skilled and skilled cast members and the NABTU group stepped in to help. And I gotta say, we were really proud of the essential workers that continue to do the important work keeping us poised for what now is clear, a, a strong recovery. And we did everything we could during that time to keep them safe while they were at work. We implemented safety measures, including social distancing. We were all wearing face coverings and provided sanitation stations throughout the resort. We also provided on-site COVID testing and later vaccination locations across our properties. But despite those efforts, we weren't immune to the devastating impact that COVID-19 had on our business. Now, like most companies, Disney, we, ex we experienced furloughs. And for those who were furloughed, we worked to find innovative, innovative solutions to continue health care and pay retirement benefits. We also experienced a period of layoffs, but as business returned, we were able to hire nearly every person back who wanted to return. And, and I will be honest, looking back on that per period, it was, it was tough. It was tough for everyone. But through those difficult times, we saw the best come out of people. Our guests, they stayed connected with Disney. Some even built attractions in their living rooms or in their backyards. Our cast made videos on social media, keeping the magic alive. Our company donated PPE, food, and other critical supplies to our communities around the world. And as Disney World and Disneyland remain closed, our security cast members, many of whom are military veterans, they maintain our time-honored tradition of raising and lowering the American flag in our parks every single morning and every evening. This was an incredibly meaningful act during a difficult time. It's a symbol of resilience, of strength, and of hope, particularly for our veterans. Veterans are the backbone of our company ever since the 1950s and the construction of Disneyland. And that's something that I know NABTU and Disney, we have this in common. I applaud all of you for the work that you do to help veterans transition from military to civilian life with programs such as Helmets to Hard Hats. And through our Heroes Work Here program, we're honored to provide career opportunities for active and retired men and women who have served our great nation. To date, we've hired more than 11,000 people through that program. And now, as we enter what is hopefully the tail end of the pandemic, it's time to celebrate our past and get back to building for our future. Over the past year, we've opened a new land at Disney California Adventure called Avengers Campus. And as I said earlier, we kicked off, we kicked off the, if you haven't checked it out, go check it out, it's super fun. We kicked off the most magical celebration in the world at Walt Disney World Resort. Disney World's 50th anniversary celebration. This is a big one, as it should be, with new experiences throughout the whole resort. We have new attractions based on popular films like Ratatouille or Guardians of the Galaxy. We have new firework shows in Epcot and the Magic Kingdom. And we just opened perhaps our most immersive experience ever. It's a new hotel concept called Star Wars Galactic Star Cruiser. We're also remodeling the entire front portion of Epcot. You're all very involved with that. It's a major, major project, as you can imagine. And then later this year, we'll welcome an enormous new thrill ride based on the film franchise, Tron. And then we're in the midst of our annual Flower and Garden Festival. The parks, I gotta be honest, they've never looked better thanks to our talented team of NABTU horticulturists. So thank you for that. All of this transformation and enhancement keeps 
our guests coming back. It keeps our cast members excited and our company full of confidence that there will always be a need to build new projects and tell new stories. If you haven't been to a Disney theme park lately, uh, if you haven't been there for a while, come out and visit. There's a lot going on. You're all, you're all part of it. And I'd love for you to see the work that the union members have done and continue to do every day to create the magic of Disney. There is nothing more valuable to our organization than having a productive relationship with our workforce and the unions that represent them. I want to thank each of you in this room for nurturing and supporting the skills and trades that are the foundation of providing millions of fulfilling careers for workers across North America and for making dreams come true for tens of millions of guests at our resorts. I look forward to the next 50 years with all of you together. Thanks for having me today and thanks for all that you do.